The C++ layer is the so-called fully connected layer. If we have a one-dimensional input array X with a certain length, let's say the length is given by n features, and a one-dimensional output array Y of a certain length, and this length is given by out features, then the function of this um, fully connected layer is simply a matrix multiplication with an addition of an array B that's called bias, followed by a nonlinear function called the activation function. In PyTorch, the matrix multiplication and addition is uh, implemented in this function here. So the linear layer computes the function y, it's equal to x multiplied by, by a transpose plus b, where t here is the transpose operator for the matrix. The coefficients of the matrix A and the array B, they are called weights. So, and they will be uh, obtained, these weights will be obtained by using optimi optimization, that's also called training in neural networks terminology. You can take a look at this uh, function in PyTorch, looking at the PyTorch documentation, and we have here this uh, linear, and it applies a linear transformation to the incoming data y equals x times a transpose plus b and here we see the in features the out features and the bias so this is the size of each input sample the size of each output sample and bias here it can be um, set to false if we don't want to use bias or it can be uh, set to true which is the default this is called fully connected because the matrix a connects each input element, so also called feature, to each output element or feature. The input and output arrays, they are one dimensional because of the full and fixed connectivity. If we have an image as an input, we will just uh, have to reshape into a one dimensional array, for instance, using a view or reshaping PyTorch. Often neural networks are used as detectors. In that case, each value in the output array Y would correspond to the output of one detector, and each detector represents one class. This linear array, uh, layer is usually followed by a nonlinear function, also called an activation. For instance, the rectified linear unit function uh, can be applied to each output element or feature. So this is also called the ReLU, the Rectified Linear Unit Function. This uh, function applies the element-wise function given here. So this function limits the output to the non-negative range. And this is useful when the output represents a detector. In this case, a value of 1 might mean detected with certainty, and a value of 0 would mean not detected with certainty. Here, negative values would make no sense. This is probably the most often used activation function because of its simplicity. In PyTorch documentation, you can also take a look at the ReLU, and it applies this rectified linear unit function element-wise, given here, we have all the documentation about this um, function. Often, a slightly modified version is used, which avoids the vanishing gradient for negative values, um, which helps the optimization. In this um, modified version, it has a small slope for negative values, and it's uh, called the leaky relu. And we can also take a look at the PyTorch documentation of the leaky ReLU. And we see that there is a small slope here. And we can set uh, these values. So we can... There's negative slope, it's a float. That by default is 0.01. And we can change this. And, uh, this leaky ReLU will apply this function here. So we have this negative slope times the minimum of 0 to x.
Another activation function is the softmax, and the softmax activation function turns the outputs of a network into looking like a probability function, positive and summing up to one. So this is another very uh, used activation function, and again, we find in the documentation, it's given by this equation here, this is the softmax, and this applies the softmax function to an um, n-dimension input tensor, and rescaling them so that the elements of the n-dimension output tensor will lie in the range of 0 to 1, and will sum to 1. An alternative activation uh, function is the so-called sigmoid function, which is differential everywhere, but it's more complex to compute. This is the classic act activation function, which is already used in the early papers about neural networks. And the sigmoid is given by this function here, and we find it, you can also look, uh, see how it looks like in PyTorch documentation. 